Hemant Soren to be elected leader of the JMM Legislative Party today. Jharkhand Mukti Morcha led alliance has won 47 seats in the 81 member Jharkhand Assembly. Pro Citizenship Amendment Act rallies in several cities all across the country. Addressing a rally in Kolkata, BJP working president JP Nadda says no one should worry about the legislation. Calcutta High Court directs Mamta government to stop anti citizenship legislation advertisements. Harshwadan Shringla to be the next foreign secretary of India. Currently, India's ambassador to the United States, Shringla will take charge from Vijay Gokhale, who retires next month. India Iran express concern over threat posed by state sponsored terrorism, call for immediate end of all terror sanctuaries. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar meets top Iranian leadership, including President Hassan Rouhani, during his two day visit to Tehran. And in cricket, Team India captain Virat Kohli and vice captain Rohit Sharma end the year as the top two ranked ODI players in the ICC one day rankings. Jaspreet Bhumra continues to be the top 50 over bowler despite not playing during most of the season due to injury. Good morning. Headlines at half past 10. I am Anil Thomas. Now for the stories in detail. JMM Legislative Party will meet today in Rachi to elect its leader. The meeting will be held under the chairmanship of the party president Shibu Sorain. Jharkhand Mukti Morcha Executive President Himan Sorain is likely to be elected as the Legislative Party leader and most likely to be the next Chief Minister of the state of Jharkhand. JMM Congress RJD Alliance won 47 seats in the 81 member assembly. BJP won 25 seats in this assembly election with uh, Chief Minister Raghubar Das himself losing from Jamshedpur East constituency. He took responsibility for the party's loss. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated the JMM leader Heman Sorain and JMM led alliance for the victory in the Jharkhand polls. Prime Minister Modi said his party would continue serving the state and raising people centric issues. In what may be seen as strengthening of voices in support of Pro-Citizenship Amendment Act, BJP working president JP Nadal led a massive rally in Kolkata. He said the outreach is aimed at dispelling myths and misunderstandings regarding the Citizenship Act. He also launched an attack on West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee saying she is protesting against the Citizenship Amendment Act for vote bank politics. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, who has been leading the protest against the citizenship legislation, received a setback from the Calcutta High Court on Monday. The court directed all state-sponsored advertisements against the Citizenship Amendment Act and National Register of Citizens, that's NRC, to be removed from public platforms. The matter will now be heard on the 9th of January. Meanwhile, amidst this development, Rahul Gandhi Manmohan Singh, Priyanka Gandhi and other host of Congress leaders participated in protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act. In the next few days, BJP plans to undertake at least 1000 rallies across the country to dispel all myths and apprehensions among the people about the Citizenship Act. Bollywood actress Kangana Ranawat has said that indulging in violence over citizenship amendment bill is not a very reasonable thing to do in a democracy like India. जब भी आप किसी चीज का प्रदर्शन करते हैं तो सबसे पहले तो जरूरी होता है कि आप वायलेंस को ना आई थिंक हम लोगों की जो पॉपुलेशन है पूरा सिर्फ 3 से 4% लोग टैक्स देते हैं बाकी उसी टैक्स के भरोसे रहते हैं तो व्हाट गिव्स यू द राइट टू बर्न बसेस एंड ट्रेन्स एंड टू क्रिएट रकस इन द कंट्री दैट शुड बी लुक्ड इनटू क्योंकि एक बस 70 80 90 लाख की होती है ये कोई छोटा अमाउंट नहीं है 
और जो देश की हालत है जितने लोग भूखमरी से मर रहे हैं एंड जितना लोग मैल न्यूट्रिशन से मर रहे हैं इट्स नॉट वेरी रीजनेबल फॉर पीपल टू यू नो डू इंडल्ज इन वायलेंस Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that the government headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi is committed to completely wipe out terrorism, left-wing extremism and insurgency in the northeast in the next 5 years. Delivering the 32nd endowment lecture on the Intelligence Bureau, the Home Minister asked the security agencies to accord special focus to securing the country's land and maritime borders which he listed as challenges in the coming years in achieving India's dream. of becoming a 5 trillion dollar economy he lauded the ib for ably tackling uh, the challenges of national security including busting of terror modules in the last 5 years and tackling northeast insurgency very effectively over the years the home minister saluted the ib personnel who worked tirelessly and anonymously for national security and underscored their contribution in helping the country emerge stronger The 19th India Iran Joint Commission meeting uh, was uh, held uh, and external affairs minister S J Shankar met top Iranian leadership including president Hassan, Hassan Rouhani during his two day visit to Tehran during the meeting the two ministers shared concerns at the grave threat posed by terrorism and called for immediate end to all support to terror sanctuaries they agreed that state aid abatement and support to terrorism should be condemned Both sides expressed support for efforts to maintain peace, security and stability in the region. The leaders also reviewed and positively assessed the progress in bilateral cooperation including connectivity, trade and commerce, cultural and people to people contacts. They also exchanged views on regional and global issues of mutual interest. Following his Iran visit, External Affairs Minister S J Shankar reached Muscat with an aim to forge stronger partnership with Oman. He was warmly welcomed by the minister responsible for foreign affairs of uh, Oman, Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah. External affairs minister also held bilateral consultation in Muscat. Harshvardhan Shringla, India's ambassador to the United States, has been appointed as the new foreign secretary. Shringla is a 1984 batch officer of the Indian Foreign Service. He will take over the charge of the foreign sec. of the post of foreign secretary on January 29th after incumbent Vijay Keshav Gokhale's two year term ends the appointment has been cleared by the appointments committee of the cabinet headed by the prime minister narendra modi swachh bharat mission urban has achieved its target of creating urban india open defecation free urban areas of 35 states and union territories have become odf In all 4320 cities out of the 4372 have declared themselves ODF. This has been achieved by the construction of over 65 lakh individual household toilets against the mission target of 59 lakhs and 5.89 lakh seats of public toilets against the mission target of 5 lakh 8000 seats. A fire broke out at two different factories in the Narela industrial area of Delhi this morning. Flames have been doused in one of the factories while firefighting operations are underway at the other. 30 fire tenders are working on the spot. No casualty has been reported from the factory while three persons are believed to be injured. Moving to Himachal Pradesh where over 100 tourists are stranded in the Solang Nala area of Manali due to incessant snowfall vehicles were stranded for hours in almost the 4 kilo with 4 kilometers of traffic jam causing trouble for smooth commute Solang Nala is a high altitude valley that lies at the top of Kulu and is located 13 kilometers from Manali It is a famous tourist spot witnessing thousands of tourists every day during the winter season to enjoy snowfall. The Prime Minister's scheme for holistic nutrition popularly known as Poshan Abhiyan or National Nutrition Mission aims at improving the nutritional outcome for children till the age of 6 years 
pregnant women and lactating mothers by means to reduce stunting, malnutrition, anemia among young children, women and adolescent girls. Let us take a look at this ground report from Medak district of Telangana state as how effective the scheme has been for the people of this place. Under central government's portion abhiyan, essential nutrition is being provided to children, pregnant and nursing mothers through Anganwadi and health centers across the country. The scheme is being implemented in an effective manner in Medak district of Telangana as well. Under this scheme, well-balanced nutritional diet is being provided to children, pregnant and nursing mothers at the Anganwadi center in Veldurti village in the district. The meal mainly consists of rice, milk and eggs to help protect them from malnutrition anemia and other related diseases. Women are happy with the initiative and say it is a great step to ensure their good health and that of their children. I am in 8th month of my pregnancy. Under Poshan Abhiyan, nutritious food is being provided to us every day and we are also informed about the importance of eating nutritious food and the impact it will have on our child. I live in Vildurti village in Medak. I am currently in my 7th month. To take care of our nutritional needs, rice, milk, eggs are being given to me every day for a better health of my child and me. Poshan Abhyan is transforming the lives of children, adolescent girls, pregnant and lactating mothers in Bedak district of Telangana by providing the essential daily nutritional requirements. The scheme also aims at protecting women and children from anemia. The scheme is surely bringing smiles to the faces of mothers and children in the district. Bureau Report, DD News. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today attended the Integrated Financial Advisors Workshop in the National Capital. Addressing the gathering, the Minister hailed the Indian Air Force's role in armed forces as they are responsible for giving financial advice to executives on important procurement decisions. Integrated Financial Advisors is work sap me akar mujhe sach mujh khushi ho rahi hai. और इस तरह के जो आयोजन होते हैं वो न सिर्फ हमारी पॉलिसीज और प्रैक्टिसेस के मूल्यांकन में महत्वपूर्ण स्थान रखते हैं बल्कि हमारी भावी नीतियों के लिए भी एक मार्ग प्रशस्त करते हैं और यह आयोजन मैं मानता हूं कि एक विश्वास भी पैदा करता है कि हम अपने फाइनेंशियल मैटर्स के प्रति कितने जिम्मेदार हैं और कितने प्रतिबद्ध हैं मेरी समझ में हमारी यह जिम्मेदारी और प्रतिबद्धताएँ हमारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को अकाउंटेबल और देश के देश को फाइनेंशियली इंडिपेंडेंट बनाने में भी मदद करती हैं सऊदी अरेबिया ऑन मंडे सेंटेंस फाइव पीपल टू डेथ एंड थ्री मोर टू जेल टर्म्स टोटलिंग 24 फोर ईयर्स ओवर द किलिंग ऑफ सऊदी जर्नलिस्ट जमाल खशोगी इन इस्तानबुल इन अक्टूबर लास्ट ईयर Saudi Deputy Public Prosecutor and Spokesman Shalan Al Shalan, reading out the verdict in the trial, said the court dismissed charges against the remaining three of the 11 people that had been on trial, finding them not guilty. Shalan said the investigation showed the killing was not premeditated and occurred at the spur of the moment. In Syria, at least six people were killed and several others wounded on Monday in a car explosion in the northern region. The blast occurred in the village of Suluk near the Turkish border. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the bombing. Suluk is controlled by the Turkey-backed opposition fighters and is near the Syrian border town of Talayev in Raqqa province. Turkey is seeking international support for plans to settle 1 million Syrians in part of northeast Syria that its forces and their Syrian rebel allies seized from the Kurdish YPG militia in a cross-border incursion. In October. Meanwhile, Syrian forces have gained ground after a week-long renewed assault against the last opposition enclave in northwest 
This is the biggest such push in more than three months that has prompted a large civilian exodus. The wide-scale offensive led by intense aerial strikes on civilian areas in rural southeastern Idlib province broke months of stalemate on the front lines where rebels have been holding back the army from major advances. Venice has uh, once again been hit by exceptional flooding. Waters on Monday morning passed the 140 centimeter mark for the fifth time this year, bringing parts of the historic city to a standstill. Venice suffered its worst week of flooding in mid-November since records began in 1872, recording four tides above 140 centimeters in just seven days. Last month's flood cost around 1 billion euros of damage and severely damaged the tourism industry on which the Lagoon City relies heavily on. As flood water swept through Venice, Santa Claus replaced his boots with thigh-high rain boots uh, or gum boots while he waded through a flooded St. Mark Square on Monday. Even floods did not stop local people, tourists and Santa Claus to celebrate the festive season. Notre-Dame Cathedral in Paris will not hold the Christmas service this week for the first time in over two centuries. The Paris Cathedral, which suffered a devastating fire this year, is still closed to the public as reconstruction efforts slowly get underway. French President Emmanuel Macron has set a timetable of five years to completely repair the structure. Workers are currently erecting a 200-foot crane that will loom above the cathedral to help finalize the operations needed to stabilize the wielded building. Santa Claus departed from his home inside the Arctic Circle on Monday to begin his annual journey around the world and deliver Christmas gifts to expectant children all over the globe. Families gathered at Santa's official residence in the town of Finland to listen to Christmas songs and hear some words of wisdom from the man himself as the final preparations were made. Santa spoke to the crowd briefly, wishing them a peaceful and happy Christmas before setting off uh, on the first leg of his journey, which will take him to the North Pole to stock up his sleigh with gifts for lucky children all over the world. Santa will then collect the rest of his reindeer before beginning his longest day's work of the year as he heads off on his Christmas Eve expedition to bring joy to the world. Merry Christmas to everybody. Another year old. Very Merry Christmas. Season of cheer and joy. Moving now to sports, Indian skipper Virat Kohli and opener Rohit Sharma ended the year on a glorious note after remaining static at the first and second position in the ICC ODI ranking for batsmen. Kohli had 887 points to his name. Rohit followed him at, uh, with 873. Among the bowlers, Jaspreet Bhumra, whose last ODI was at the ICC World Cup in 2019, finished as the top-ranked bowler. New Zealand left-arm pacer Trent Bolt is second in the rankings, followed by Mujibur Rahman of Bangladesh at number three. The BCCI Selection Committee, led by MSK Prasad on Monday, announced India's T20 and ODI squads for the upcoming home series against Sri Lanka and Australia, respectively. A fit again, Jaspreet Bumrah made a return in both the squads, while Vice-Captain Rohit Sharma was rested for the T20 series versus Sri Lanka. Senior opener Shikhar Dhawan was also back in both the squads, while pacer Mohamed Shami got a break from the T20 series. India will face Sri Lanka in three T20s from January 5th, followed by three ODIs against Australia, starting from January 14th. Meanwhile, Deepak Chahar, who aggravated his back injury in the second ODI against Windies, will be out till the start of next year's IPL. Indian weightlifter Rocky Haldar with, uh, was, with creating two national records, clinched a bronze medal in the women's 64 kilogram weight category at the Qatar International Cup in Doha. The Commonwealth Championship gold medalist superseded the senior national record in both snatch and the total lift with a personal best effort. 
at the Commonwealth Championship in June. Haldar had clinched the gold with a combined effort of 214 kilograms, including 94 and 120 in clean and jerk. India ended the Olympic qualifying silver level event uh, with three medals. Former world champion Mirabai Chanu had won the gold on the opening day, while teenager Jeremy Lalringwa had clinched the silver in a power pack performance. The points from this tournament will come in handy when the final rankings for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics are done. Self-defense opens up the source of freedom for women in an imperfect world. Building confidence in physical resistance skills allows women to feel more capable and more at peace. The Nirbhaya Karate Center in Karnataka is helping women in raising their voice by teaching them self-defense skills. Women are not only trained to fight against adverse situations, but also being trained to be mentally and physically strong. This organization for women endures or ensures that women should not feel like victim, rather combat any situation like a hero. By learning self-defense, they are feeling confident to fight back. While crime against women are being increasingly reported from various places, women have become aware about self-defense. Gandhiji had also said that unless the women of the country are safe, the country cannot be completely free. Many organizations are working towards boosting self-confidence of women. Today, women of all ages are eagerly learning self-defense skills. The Nirvaya Karate Kendra in Sivamoga district of Karnataka remains one such platform where women are taking self-defense training. Women are a symbol of endurance and creativity but are not willing to compromise when their self-esteem is challenged. In the self-defense school, women of all ages are trained in martial arts, karate, through practical training. Women are learning how to avoid molestation and snooping. मैं जब से कराटे सीख रही हूँ मेरे अंदर का डर कम होता जा रहा है पहले मुझे अकेले कहीं भी बाहर आने जाने में डर लगता था पर अब मैं आत्मविश्वास के साथ कहीं भी बाहर आ जा सकती हूँ गर्ल्स एंड वुमेन आर लर्निंग ट्रिक्स एंड स्किल्स टू टैकल एनी सिचुएशन वेर अ स्ट्रेंजर सडनली अटैक्स दिस ट्रेनिंग इज नॉट ओनली बूस्टिंग द सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस बट ऑल्सो मेकिंग दम फिजिकली फिट टू कम्बैट एनी एडवर्सिटी हमारा मुख्य उद्देश्य महिलाओं को कराटे की शिक्षा देकर उन्हें सशक्त करना है ताकि वे आत्मरक्षा के लिए किसी पर निर्भर न रहें और आत्मविश्वास के साथ अपना जीवन व्यतीत कर सके फॉर द लास्ट फाइव इयर्स निर्भया सेल्फ डिफेंस स्कूल ऑफ कर्नाटका हज बिन गिविंग वुमेन द कॉन्फिडेंस बाई इम्पार्टिंग देम सेल्फ डिफेंस स्किल्स देर बिकमिंग कॉन्फिडेंट टू ओवरकम एनी सिचुएशन to be mentally strong and stand for themselves mothers of several girls are also taking training here along with their daughters volunteers also go to the nearby factories to teach women the self defense skills bengaluru bureau good news india dd news well that's all we have time for in this edition of news thanks for watching